Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing Maniacal from Eagle Griffin Games. Maniacal is a game for two to five players that plays in 60 to 120 minutes. And in the game, you're going to be taking on the persona of a evil mastermind or supervillain and trying to gain the most infamy points over three rounds. And mostly your infamy points are gonna come from completing contracts such as stealing nuclear warheads or kidnapping presidents or things of that nature. So here we have our rule book, go through pretty quickly. The back here you have a couple variants, a bodyguard variant, as well as some advanced rules. Each of the supervillains has a special power and also a weakness. They recommend you don't use that in your first playthrough. And then there's also uh, finales, which are uh, events you can do right at the end of the game uh, for a little extra scoring. And then you have an automated heroes variant as well. And then finally on the back, just a little rules reference. Okay, so we've got several cardboard pieces here, as well as our game board. So here we just have money, essentially, uh, little cardboard chits for money. It's pretty standard and everything comes out fine, punches out fine. It's nice, thick cardboard, so there's nothing to worry about there. You've got little tokens here. These are injury tokens. Your henchman could get injured uh, during, you know, going on a contract. So just punch a few of those out. And then we have the game board itself here. pretty big board but you can see you have the infamy track on the outside so basically that's just scoring you've got time tracks when you get to the phase where you actually take actions you're going to be tracking that by time and the person with the most time left over is going to be the active player you've got a player order here which breaks ties as well as determining who goes first when you all start a round You've got several spots here. This will be where the contracts are, and you can see that they relate to different uh, continents. So there'll be contract cards here that you can go on. You've got some special locations here. You can go to the hospital to remove an injury from your henchmen. You can go to the underground to get schemes, and you can go to Lucifer's Lounge, which lets you get uh, mercenary cards. And then on the top here, I'll adjust my camera a bit just so you can see. You've got spots here for the four types of henchmen, which will get um, collected by players on a certain round. And then you've got an attraction score here. Basically the way this works is there's a round of, it's not exactly drafting, but uh, accumulation, I guess, of henchmen, hiring henchmen. And you get the option of hiring the henchmen if your attraction to that type of henchman is the highest. So. For instance, here we've got these, this green um, icon is for scientists. So during the henchman phase, you'll have a henchman phase specifically for scientists. And whoever has the highest attraction to scientists will get, that, get the scientist that's available for that round. And there's two available for each round. So you'll do the first one and then that person will pay however much influence it took. So if your influence for, um, Scientist is at 10 and the scientist you acquire cost you four, your attraction will go down to six. Now the next henchman, uh, the next scientist, I should say, you may get that as well if six is still the highest value on the attraction board, but you may have also moved past somebody who's now higher than you. And then, so they would get that scientist. So 
So that's our game board. So the rest, we've got quite a few cards. Let's get to that last. We got some extra bags here. Got some dice and some wooden pieces. So the dice are how you resolve contracts. Basically, when you choose to take on a contract, you're going to send henchmen to attempt that contract. And each henchman you send is gonna allow you to roll a certain number and a certain type of dice. The only difference between the type of henchman you send is that uh, contracts will show a recommended trait. So if they show the blue trait and you send a henchman that gives you one green die and one blue die, well, the fists are successes and some of them have multiples. So if you rolled this, if you rolled like this, this was your result, you'd get three successes. But they also all have a side, which is their particular trait. So you have intelligence here and stealth here. So let's say that stealth is the recommended trait on that particular contract. If this was your result, this green counts as nothing because that's not the recommended trait. The blue, however, counts as two successes because it was a recommended trait. So this would be two successes on its own. And then, so if you rolled that, you'd have three. So that's really the only reason why you want to send henchmen of a particular, that give you a particular die color. Um, speaking of, these dice are really nice. Um, they've got a, a marble effect to them, which is nice. And the, uh, I, I guess this is inking, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't feel raised at all. It's just really clean and nice. I like these dice a lot, actually. We've got our wooden components, which, so you have your henchmen. If you're playing this henchman, you're gonna have this meeple. So you've got uh, basically player pieces for different players. You've got a round tracker which is here, and then you've got discs. And these will be the different discs. You have several of them. You'll use them to uh, track your attraction. You'll use the thicker one uh, for your uh, turn order, um, to put on the turn order track. So that's all the wooden pieces. So let's get into the cards. So. The first thing you do every round is you're going to have a base phase. And so all of these are rooms that you can build in your base. So first thing that happens at each round is each player is going to get five of these base cards and you're going to draft these. You're going to do it one at a time. You're going to get a total of three opportunities to build rooms. So eventually you will discard the, the last two cards. But so you're going to look at these cards. And these aren't shuffled, obviously, so they're kind of all over the place. But I believe that all these rooms are actually unique. I want to say that they're unique. Um, so you're going to look at five of them. And then each player is going to choose one to resolve on that turn. You can resolve a card in one of two ways. You can either build it, which costs you a certain amount of money, or you can sell it. If you sell it, you gain simply whatever money is there. So I can either build this Office of Bioterrorism for five, or I can sell it for five. What the rooms do for you, there's a couple of different things they can do. Some of them are actions, and you'll see here, action. It takes one time period, which is basically a week. Uh, I believe that's what it is in the game. It's a week. Um, and again, that's that time track we saw on the board. You'll be moving down it. So it gives you an action. So this is an action you can take on your turn. You send somebody here, you spend a week of time. It says draw two scheme cards, choose one to keep and put the other on the bottom of the scheme deck. That's an action that you can now take because you have built this building. Nobody else can do that. It also gives you attraction. So it allows you to move up on the scientist attraction by four spaces, which again is how you get henchmen, which you want. So let's say I, 
I build this one, we pass cards, we do this again. Um, I'm just gonna sell this one because I want the money. We pass cards again, and then I decide I want a war room. So I, I build that as well. That's it for round one's room phase. And all players will do that ending with at most three rooms in front of them after the first round. Then you're gonna move on to the henchman phase, which I briefly explained earlier, where players are going to gain henchman cards based off of their attraction. And there are four types of henchman cards and you'll do two of each card. Whenever you gain a henchman card, you'll move your attraction down by the value of that card. So here is, I believe these are beast cards. Um, if this was the top card, whoever had the highest attraction for beasts would gain it. They'd lose one value of whatever their attraction is. And then you'd resolve the second card the same way. And then you'd move on to the magic. I believe these are the magic uh, henchmen and then the scientist henchmen, and then whatever the blue henchmen are, which I don't remember offhand. Again, two each round. So the way the henchmen work is they provide a certain value of a certain stat. So these are the four traits that we saw on the dice, red, blue, green, and orange. Whenever you are attempting a contract, you're going to send a certain number of henchmen to that contract. And those henchmen are going to give you the dice that you're going to roll on that contract. And then you'll succeed or fail depending on what you roll. You can see that obviously some of them give more, up to four it looks like, up to five actually. So, and then you've got uh, just some little flavor text here at the bottom. So those are the henchmen. Okay, so we've got criminals. That's who the blue are. And then you got lackeys. Every player is going to start with a lackey. Usually it's determined by your superhero. And the lackeys give you one value in everything, uh, in all four traits. Then you've got mercenaries. Again, mercenaries are something you can recruit if you go to that special location. The special locations uh, take two weeks uh, on, your, on, on your time track. And then mercenaries, again, just give you three of a particular trait. You don't necessarily know which one you'll get because they're all face down, but they're worth three. You also have scheme cards here. Scheme cards were another one of those special areas that you can go to to draw scheme cards. You can also draw scheme cards with building certain rooms in your base. And also certain contracts will let you draw scheme cards uh, if you fail or succeed at them. So scheme cards here, you can use these when you are attempting a contract or you can use them against an opponent attempting a contract. So if you use it for yourself, you're gonna use the unexpected ally. Reroll up to three dice during a contract resolution. If you use it on your opponent, you're gonna use the unexpected adversary side, increase target value of a contract by two, and it gives you infamy points. So that's basically how the schemes work. Um, and they do have, you know, different, they aren't all the same. They aren't all this card. They have different effects. You've got some uh, heroes here. These are for that variant we saw at the end of the rule book. If you want to use automated heroes, and I won't go through those. And they have power cards if you do use them. This is what the heroes get, I believe. And then finally, we got these big cards, which are going to include the contract cards, which are a big part of the game. So first of all, we've got some cheat sheets here. A little bit of a, I hope I didn't do that. A um, little bit of a nick at the top of the card there. So just explaining the basic round sequence, base building is first, then you go to henchmen's, then you go to the contract phase, 
you have a cleanup phase, and then here it just explains to you on the round what kind of contracts you're gonna have out because there's three different difficulties. And again, there's just one of these for each player. And on the back, just a reference to the different icons in the game. Then you have the contract cards themselves. Quite a few of them. And again, there are three difficulties to them. There's legendary difficulty, hard difficulty, and let's look at the easy ones. So first thing that these thing, these contracts tell you are the recommended trait to use. So you're not going to know what you're going to need on the other side of this is going to tell you what, how to resolve it, but you're not going to know that when you decide what contract to select, all you're going to know is the information on the back of the card, which is it's difficulty, the trait that's recommended for it and how many henchmen you have to send. You have to send exactly two henchmen to this contract. You have to send exactly one to this contract. You can't send more than you need to. So once you decide on what contract you're going to go to, you're going to determine what two henchmen you want to send. And then after you've locked in those henchmen, then you're going to flip over the card. So in this one, you're trying to summon the ghost of Moriarty to advise you. The recommended trait is the yellow trait, which I believe is magic. And you need a total of four or more successes. Now, I should point out, so since we're here, that these dice uh, are not all the same. They all have their trait icon on them, but the other sides are different. The magic one has a three success side, a one success side, a one success side, and then three blanks. And then the intelligence one has a two success, and two singles, and then, I'm sorry, three singles, and then two blanks. So the dice are a little bit different, and you should know that going into the, this here. So target of four successes. If you succeed, you know, this is what happens. If you fail, this is what happens. Success, you get five victory points, or infamy points. You get three money, and you get this effect, which is explained On your little cheat sheet but this is a, a power card so you get to draw one of these and then if you fail you get you still get one infamy point and two money but one of your henchmen that was involved in this contract is going to be injured and again there's quite a few of these and um the the flavor text on these is quite entertaining uh i find but that is the contract cards. And that is a large part of the game. That's where you're gonna get most of your infamy points. The last few things we have here is we have the different, different super villains you can pick from. And so again, this is a advanced rule, but they all have a strength. So in this one, her lackey is exceptional, which is a, a special, um, power that it has, but let's look at this one. Uh, after revealing a contract, you can exhaust your supervillain to reduce the target value by one or exhaust both your supervillain and your lackey to reduce the target value by three. But his weakness is each time you succeed on a contract, you lose a total of two attraction points. You also have a time cost and that is different for the different supervillains, basically completing contracts in different um, land masses uh, cost you a different amount of time, depending on who you are. Last thing you have is finale cards. And these are things that you can go through at the very end of the game for additional scoring. Uh, you've got a very high target, but you, know, you, you can also score points just for having a certain number of scientists or being successful at a certain number of magic traits by the time you get to the finale. So that's it. That's everything you're going to get in a copy of Maniacal from Eagle Griffin Games.